Hello, and welcome to how to submit an invoice on the PIEE website, also known as WAWF. So, I am here to show you on how to submit the invoice because, as you all know, if you tried it, if you look at WAWF, it's like, what the 1985? is this it is very outdated and very old but it's not that bad so i'm going to walk you through the steps on how to submit there if you if you're working on a government contract and they're requiring you to uh submit payment through the wwf then this is the video for you stay tuned for more information like and follow and subscribe for more videos on how to navigate through these types of websites for the federal government. Now, let's get started. So you want to go to the website PIEE. Um, you should have this website. Okay. If you haven't um, signed up yet, click the link above for the video on how to sign up with the PIEE. But this video is for strictly invoicing. So when you come to here, you're always going to have to log in. Okay, they make you do that. So once you log in, um, there is web-based training on how to submit an invoice, but I'm telling you, literally, it's like 1985. If you weren't born in the 80s, you're going to be like, what the heck is this? Now, this video is only for the payment method of WAWF. I haven't worked with my invoice or any of these additional um, apps, so I don't know about it yet. When I do work with them, of course, I will be doing another video on them. So right now, we're going to click on Wide Area Workflow. That's what WAWF stands for. Okay, so to submit an invoice, the first thing you will need to do is create a document. You are a vendor. Once you have been signed up and everything, you're going to go to create a document. Okay, before we start with this document, there are a few things that you're going to need before even starting. You're going to have to pull up your contract and you're going to have to get the following information. The contract number, which should be on page one. Then there are codes that's usually located on page 16 or 17. And I will explain that to you when we get to that part. So you're going to need page 16 and 17. Also, you're going to need to know what document type you're submitting. Some contracts call for a combo. If it's a shipping, some contacts um, call for two and one or envoy. It depends on whatever they, however they want you to submit it. That's what you need. And that is also in your contract. And then I will show you how to find that in your contract. But once you start, you need those documents. So if you don't have them, pause this video, go get your contract, and we're going to go step by step. Okay, so now that you have your documents in hand, let's get started. So the first thing you need is your contract number because it's going to look up your contract. It's going to pull up your pricing that you did when you submitted your proposal. It's going to pull up all that. So you're going to have to enter your contract number. And just so you know, there are no o, no letter O's. It's all numbers. If you see a zero, then that's a zero and not an O. It does not accept O's. Okay. Now, another thing I'm going to mention, very important. If it has an asterisk, then you must fill it out. If it does not have an asterisk, don't even touch it. Leave it alone. Okay. Leave it alone. Asterisk, make sure you fill it out. Don't have an asterisk, leave it alone. <laughs> okay. Don't even touch it. So once you put in your contract number, you're going to click on next.
and it's going to bring up your contract. Remember when you were submitting a proposal and they had all those lines, the CL, CLINs is what they call it. So, so what you're going to do is given if you're doing maybe like I have a proposal and it has multiple years. Remember the CLN. This is where your contract comes into play. Now, if they are if they're giving you the full amount for the year, which I don't think they do, then you can click on the the year or all five years or whatever. Usually, a CLN is a different line item. So make sure you go to your contract. So I'm going to go to my contract, as you can see. And my line items are based on year. But if you have a, a product that you're shipping or if you have other contracts, this is how you decide which one you're going to click. So you're going to click on, given that I'm paying per month, I'm going to click only on line item. Because as you can see, my period of performance is from May 2022 to April 2023. So I am only clicking on the first line item. If you are clicking on more than one line item, please make sure that the CLN or CLIN represents or matches what you're supposed to be getting paid for. It's very important or it's going to get kicked back and you're going to have trouble. So as you can see, my CLN, CLIN, oh my God, CLAN, that's what I'm going to call it. My CLAN, CLIN is for, for the first year, 0001. These are my option years. So I have four option years, okay? Yeah, I know I got a five-year contract. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, so I'm going to click on that one, okay? As you remember, I said anything that's an asterisk, you must uh, put. So see the asterisk here? So you have to select one of these. None of these have asterisks, so you don't even go about it. You don't even worry about it. So we're going to move to the next one. So now that you've gotten to the document page and you, you, you've selected which uh, ceiling that you are trying to invoice for, you're going to come to this page, the documents page. Now, remember I told you one of the things you need to know is the type of document. Well, you're going to find this in your contract. So I'm going to pull out my contract again. Okay. You're going to find this in on page 16, I believe, 16 or 17. So... Okay, here we go, 16. So where it said, the, the title of this one is uh, Wide Area Workflow Payment Instructions, okay? Usually on page 16, that's what I was told, either 16 or 17. So you're going to scroll all the way down to, usually it'll be in bold, um, the type of document. I was told that they're actually supposed to put the whole name, like if it's an invoice combo, invoice two and one, blah, blah, blah. But please make sure that you read and pay attention to this because it is very important. This is one of the most important because if you put this in wrong, you're not going to get paid. So make sure that you read. So it was a little confusing for me because they, they state that there is an invoicing and receiving report document, which is here. It says combo. So, of course, naturally, I'm going to look for something that says combo. And it says invoice and receiving report. So, if I wasn't reading properly, I would be like, oh, yeah, combo invoice receiving. Here's combo. Here's invoice receiving. That's the one. No, I would be wrong. You have to read. We have to stop rushing through stuff and read it all. So this says invoice and receiving report document for fixed uh, fixed price line items that require shipment of deliverable. I am not shipping anything. I have a service. So that one will not apply to me. Make sure you read the whole line because you could accidentally submit the wrong document. Now, if as it says for B, for services that do not require shipment, submit an invoice two in one. So that is the invoice that I need to use, a two in one. And as you can see, invoice two in one, services only. So that's the one we're going to click on. 
Okay, so now this is where you really need your contract as well because as you can see, the only thing, uh, most of the stuff is filled in for us, which is good, which means we don't have to fill in anything, but we have to verify. Now, do not get laxed on this because people mess up, people make mistakes, okay? Make sure that you are checking the, the correct thing. So what we're going to check to make sure that the pay says, the the right pay invoice so if you look at page 17 uh i think they call this the dodak codes if you look at page 17 which is should be a table this is your contracts codes okay these codes must be in the fields that are um on the invoice so make sure that these codes matches so as you can see pay dodak is it matches up that one matches up with that one the dodak um for the asterisk one and you only worry about the asterisk so the dodak for the asterisk is this one that matches up so everything matches and then the service acceptor which also matches up everything matches so just make sure that everything matches when you do um when you're confirming before you submit Okay, now you're at the nitty gritty page. This is the most important page because this is where you put in your moolah. Okay, so once again, everything that has an asterisk, you have to worry about. The stuff that's already filled out, let it go. Don't worry about it. They did it for you. So as you can see, the only thing that's asterisk here is invoice. Now, invoice is a number you create. It has to be at least one character. So it can be numbers, it can be letters, it can be whatever you want, but it has to be at least one character. So I'm going to put an invoice of 001. I'm going to start off with 001. Now, as you can see, the invoice date has already been put in and final invoice is also asterisk. So basically what final invoice means is that this will be your final invoice ever for this contract. So clearly if I have four years left, this is not going to be my final invoice ever. So I'm going to click on no. Make sure you click on no, not yes, because if you click on yes, I was told that it would take a month to get the contract re up and running again if you click on yes. So make sure you click on no. Nothing else is asterisk. So we're going to go ahead and move to the next important page, which is the line item page. Now, given, given, uh, keep in mind that this tutorial is for service only. Service only, okay? So now you're going to click, at, you know, this, this error is because we haven't adjusted this yet, okay? Because we're going to have to input data into that. So once you get your line item, you're going to click on edit. And it's going to bring you to the page where you can edit stuff, okay? My line item is 001 because that's I'm in the first year. Product service ID. Now, this is asterisk. It's already in there. So more than likely it's right, but you still want to confirm. So you're going to take this and confirm it with your contract. This number, product service ID, can be found in where you where your C lands are. Okay, on page one, as you can see, product service ID, product service ID, which is also abbreviated PSC, is R416, is R416 there. Um, and then you're just going to go through this document matching to make sure everything is matched. Now, of course, if you have a service and it says ship, don't get confused. It's just um, the quantity of whatever it is. So take a look at your, your pricing sheet that you use to submit and just go based on whatever quantity that is. So my quantity is one. My measure is job. As you can see, my unit pricing is going to change because I'm billing per month, not for the total year. So in your solicitation or in your documents, you should have what you're billing if it is a monthly service per month. So my billing is going to be $2,800 per month, which is going to change it. And then you can verify this, although it doesn't have an asterisk, it's still on your CLN, 
here, C-L-I-N, um, and the A-C-R-N, make sure that is verified as well. Now, in the description, I would definitely mark what you're doing in the description. So um, just put, this is payment for May 1st or payment for whatever date it is, put that in the description, and then you're going to go save it and you're going to go back to the um, original page. So I'm going to put that in now. Once you have finished typing in the description of your pay, whether there's an explanation or not, we're going to go ahead and save CLINs, and it's going to bring us back to that first page, okay? So now that everything is done, you see the error warning is gone, everything has been cleared, now is the time, the big reveal, to submit your document. So now we are going to submit the invoice. Everything has been checked. We're going to submit the invoice so that we can get paid. And there you have it. You've submitted. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad this happened because let's see. The document contains errors in the tab's header. So let's see what errors I have in my header. Maybe I did not confirm something oh no shipment so yeah i don't know why i said that there's no shipment number so thank you for clearing that thank you thank you person thank you old company for fixing that okay so that's good to know so make sure nothing is in the shipment if you're not shipping anything make sure there's nothing in the shipment um, and then you will hopefully now submit What? Okay, so now that I remember, the guy said make sure that the shipment number and the invoice number is different. I guess they're forcing me to put a shipment number in there, although I don't have a shipment, but whatever. So I'm going to put 0001 um, just to clarify the difference. Final shipment, I'm going to say no because I said no with the final invoice. Hopefully that makes a difference. So let's see if it submits now. There we go. Uh oh, we got a warning validation for line item the unit price WAWF documents 28 in a different unit price. Okay, so this is okay because remember, my contract is not paying me for the whole year. This may happen to you if your line item contracts is divvied up per month or per service, per job, whatever. This is okay. This will be corrected. Um, and it is completely okay. That's what I was told by the customer service agent. So you can go ahead and click submit. Okay. And voila, we have done our first invoice. Congratulations. You have submitted your first invoice. Practice. And please stay tuned for more videos on how to use the WAWF system or the PIEE, which is called the Procurement Integrated Enterprise Environment. I hope you've enjoyed my video. Please like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon.